Hi, everyone, and welcome to episode 12 of the I'll Knit If I Want To podcast. Long time no see. It's probably been close to a month since I last uploaded an episode. If you are joining us for the first time, welcome. And if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. My name is Jamie Marshall. I'm the owner and artist behind Beautiful Mess Yarnworks, and um, things have been really busy, which would explain the hiatus. My son's baseball season is in full swing, and my daughter's been doing dance forever, so now we're juggling both kids' schedules with my work schedule and my husband's schedule. Um, he often has to go out of town for work, and I was just out of town for three days last week at an instructional coaching conference in State College, PA, um, at Penn State. So it's been really busy, and honestly, nobody would have wanted to watch any podcast that I had uploaded before this one. I was knitting monogamously and feverishly on my West End cardigan. And every single episode would have been, look at my sweater, look at my sweater, look at my sweater now, look, my sweater's almost done. So I wanted to wait until I had um, some really cool things in the works for you. So I definitely do today. I'm going to have a finished object. I have two things on my needles. I have some finished spinning and I have my haul from Maryland Sheep and Wool yesterday, and we'll talk a little bit about all of those things. So let's get right to it. So the first segment is off my needles, and I finished my West End cardigan, and that is a pattern from Hannah Fettig's book, Texture, uh, which features garments and accessories and exploring texture as far as stitch patterns. So I used um, Quince and Company Lark in the Parsley colorway, and it is all done, and I'm really pleased with the way it turned out. So it was my first time knitting cables, and you can see right from the bottom all the way up and around the neckline. And then back down the other side, there is um, cabling on the button band. So super fun to knit. Um, I blocked it a little long because I wanted something that would um, cover uh, my hiney in leggings or skinny jeans. So it's blocked um, kind of long. I'm happy with the way it turned out. I did a little modification. I knit the large size for the body and knit the medium sleeves because my arms are a little bit scrawny. So they tend to be um, a little big. Um, I wish I would have knit the sleeves a bit shorter. There's a lot of sleeve that sort of hangs off at the end, but I could always um, roll them up if I wanted to. But this stitch pattern from the texture book is just incredible. Um, there were a lot of firsts in this project. So first time I used Quince and Company, it is the first time I did cabling. It's the first time I did a bottom up raglan sweater and uh first time i knit sleeves flat so a lot of firsts um one thing i did do when seaming up um, the underarm which you use kitchener stitch to close that off i picked up a couple extra stitches don't mind the uh mickey mouse band-aid i had an incident with the cling wrap this morning um I picked up a couple extra stitches on each side to prevent any holes um, or gapping, and I'm really pleased with the way that turned out. So if you are considering knitting the West End cardigan, I highly recommend it. I totally recommend this Quince & Company Lark, which is a worsted weight. It was super fun to work with. Um, the detailing, how the back of the collar meets, um, is just really nice. I was going to wear it yesterday to Maryland Sheep and Wool, but I kept looking at the weather. The weather, uh, weather would actually be appropriate to, to describe it as well, but I kept looking at the weather and thinking the sun might peak out, it might get a little warm, and I thought maybe this would be too warm, and then I got there and I regretted not having worn it because it was cold and rainy. Um, 
but we'll talk more about that. So keep an eye out. I'm going to take some full um, pictures of this to post on my Instagram, and I'm going to try to get my husband to take some pictures of me wearing it so you can see it in action as well. But again, very pleased with this. Um, love the way it turned out. And I recommend it. Definitely recommend it. If you're considering knitting it, uh, please do. You won't regret it. So that is my finished object. You saw a little bit of that on Instagram uh, last week. I have a couple of different things on my needles. Um, the first I will show you is um, in my fringe supply company field bag. I was able to snag one of the black ones they had available. And I also have a little bit of stash acquisition on here. These sweet pins are from Corazon Pom Pom. And um, so I got the taco bunny and the little alpaca there. And each pin you buy comes with a sweet little pom pom. And I figured why not just put them right on my bag. So living in this bag is the first thing I have on my needles. And I am knitting the zigzagular socks, which is a free pattern on Ravelry from Susie White. And since I enjoyed the cabling so much on the um, West End cardigan, I thought I would do some on the socks. So this yarn is Stranded Dye Works Coral Dive. And I'm really, I mean, it just, it caked up beautifully. So I knew I was in for a real treat. And I think it's knitting up really lovely too, but I wanted a patterned sock. Uh, I get a little bored with vanilla, but I didn't want something that would really take away from the color. So you can see there, the zigzags just sort of come right out of the ribbing. And I'm actually done with the leg portion of the sock. So the next time I pick this up to knit on it, I'll be doing the heel flap and turning the heel and moving on to the foot. And this was really quick. I cast this on Sunday before I left for the coaching conference. And by the time I came back from the coaching conference, I think it was about down here. So having that uninterrupted hotel knitting time really does wonders. And when it's a fun pattern, I tend to sort of fly through it. So Again, this is a free pattern on Ravelry. I think it's really cute for, you know, highly variegated speckled yarns because it's got some interest in it and you don't, it doesn't necessarily get lost in, and I always do this to sort of see what it's going to look like when I wear it. It doesn't get lost in the pattern and I think the zigzag is still just prominent enough. So this is a super fun knit. So that's the first thing on my needles. The next thing I have on my needles actually involves some of my stash acquisition from Maryland Sheep and Wool. And this project is living in my fringe supply company um, tote. And I think border tote. I'll correct that. I'll put it down at the bottom. But this bag is amazing and it served me well. It's what I kept my West End cardigan in. It's nice for larger projects. Um, so I've had this pattern since it came out and I didn't um, start knitting it because I wasn't quite sure. I thought maybe I wanted to dye some of my own yarn to do it, but with things getting so busy that didn't necessarily happen. So this doesn't really show it off because it's printed in black and white, but I am working on April Fool by Melissa from Hey Lady Hey. And it's a two color shawl. And again, that is available on Ravelry. And I'm actually knitting it with my new Likey needle set that my husband got me for my birthday. And I know I had seen so many people using these and everyone said such nice things about them and i just think they're really beautiful no not even both needles you know in a single size are 
similar. They're all different. Um, so, so far it's got a really smooth join. The cords are a little stiff, but I think once I get some stitches on them and, and work with them a bit, that won't be an issue. So this is what I have so far. And this I cast on last night when I got back. It's sort of rolling up because of the stockinette. When I got back from Maryland Sheep and Wool. So here are the needles. Again, very smooth join. And just, I don't know if you can, the wood is gorgeous. So, um, so I picked up this yarn at Maryland Sheep and Wool to knit this with. Um, I wish I could get it to stay straight so you could see the really cool eyelets. So that is the main color. And that is, let me grab this. That is Free Spirit Superwash Merino Wool, single ply fingering, 434 yards, four ounces in the colorway Earth from Boho Chic Fiber Company. And again, this was purchased at the show, at the festival. And then the contrasting color I got is called Straw. And it is a beautiful sort of creamy, off-white yellow with speckles of gold and green and that's really showing up that's an accurate representation so this and this i just thought it was a nice match and i don't really have uh many neutral colored shawls i tend to go loud and crazy with my colors so i thought these two would be beautiful together so this is the main color this is the um secondary color and it's really fun to knit. I love single ply fingering yarn. I think you just get such a nice drape from in the fabric just from it being single ply. Um, a lot of the shawls I knit tend to be single ply. I'm a huge fan of Hedgehog Skinny Singles which is what my Exploration Station, my Find Your Fade, uh, and I, my boxy sweater is actually knit with um, Hedgehog Fiber Skinny Singles. So that has been really fun to knit. It's easy to follow with the pattern as far as the eyelets. It has chart directions and the written out instructions for the chart because that is actually one of my knitting goals is to learn how to properly read a chart. So I tend to stay away from complicated lace patterns that don't have written instructions. Um, but again, this has both and um, super easy to read, super fun to knit. I probably worked on that maybe like an hour last night after the kids went to bed. So um, check it out. April Fool. It's a pattern by Melissa from Hey Lady Hey. And so far, so good. Okay, so moving on to on the bobbin, and I actually have some finished spinning, and it is literally on the bobbin. I'm gonna get a drink first, if you don't mind. By the way, this is my new favorite beverage. Um, I think last time on the podcast, I had mentioned that I was doing the whole 30, um, which is no sugar, no alcohol, no dairy, no grains, no legumes, um, no soy for 30 days, which my husband and I successfully completed. I saw huge changes in my body throughout completing it. Um, you weigh yourself before and you weigh yourself after, and I lost a substantial amount of weight for that. And I'm sort of sticking to the program probably 80% of the time and allowing myself a treat every now and then and continue to drop weight and just a lot of ailments that I had are gone. Um, my fibromyalgia is better. Um, so I started talking about that in the first place because one of the hardest things about it for most people is not being able to put anything in your coffee. Um, I drink my coffee black anyway, so it wasn't an issue, but the Starbucks cold brew coffee 
almost tastes like a mocha. You get a lot of like chocolate notes in it. So that's my new favorite drink right now. But anyway, back to what is on the bobbin. So I purchased, um, and we're going to continue with the Hey Lady Hey theme. I purchased one of her Merino braids in the Pleased as Punch colorway. And I just finished applying it last night. This was super nice to spin. It's sort of, I'm glad I have these Acre Works bobbins so you can see what's underneath because I just spun it straight from the braid. So my applying is sort of mismatched and the colors are all um, marbled together, which I like. Um, but you can see on the outside some of the um, pastel greens and oranges and blues with some of the brown. Um, hiding underneath on this end, we have some coral and some pink together. And then hiding underneath on this end, some of the purples and reds. So um, this, I started spinning this quite some time ago, got the first bobbin done. And then what happened was I got my spinning wheel out to start spinning the second bobbin. And it was a mess. Um, I have an Ashford Kiwi 2, and I'm not sure what happened, if it was user error, if it was the spinning wheel itself, but I was either getting no twist in the fiber and it was sucking it right out of my hands, or it was over twisting and not really feeding in. So I played a lot with the different bands and the tension and got sort of frustrated and gave up for a little bit, but I knew that I wanted to have this finished in order to get to some of my new spinning fiber that I got at Sheep and Wool. So I really got at it and um, got it done and, and sort of found my rhythm. And then everything was A-OK -okay with the spinning wheel. So this is done. So I'll probably let this rest on the bobbin for a day or two and go ahead and wind it off um, and um, set it. And I'm thinking this would be really fun for a hat for my daughter, just because of all of the colors in it. So whenever you see Hey Lady Hey, and she does a shop update and has spinning fiber, I would highly recommend it. It was a lot of fun to spin. It's super soft. Um, and the color application is just impeccable. So that is what is on the bobbin. Um, so from the pots, there's not a whole lot of new stuff going on right now. I did dye a one-of-a-kind colorway for my mom in a sweater's quantity of DK and fulfilled some custom orders from the shop, and, that, and that's sort of the extent of it. There is still um, some skeins in the shop, and then I'm going to be taking this and anything I dye over the next week and a half to the Red Hound Grill in Westchester, Pennsylvania. They're having a sip and stitch event and invited me to come along and bring some of my yarn. So if you follow me on Instagram, um, you'll see that I'm going to be in the dye pots quite a bit, getting a lot of inventory ready to take to that trunk show. So keep your eyes out for that. Um, I think I'll save the haul from Maryland Sheep and Wool for last. But what I do want to share with you, I was going through some of my old issues of um, pom-pom, thinking what garment I wanted to knit next. I finished a heavy wool sweater just in time for summer. So I remembered that in this, I think this was spring 2016, that this amazing tank top and also how beautiful is that model but this amazing tank top is in there with this lace on the back and this sample was knit in Quince and Co will it I believe which I mean after knitting with the Quince and the Quince and Co um yarn I'll definitely go with it but here look at this picture of the back how fun is that so it's knit in a cotton yarn, a sport weight cotton yarn. So I am going to be getting what I need for this shortly. And I'm kind of thinking this might be a possible cow. 
for the podcast. I think it would be really fun if we had a bunch of people who wanted to knit this and we wanted to keep up with each other. Um, so stay tuned for that. If I decide to do that, I will post something on Instagram and also in the Ravelry group. So uh, make sure you join the beautiful, or I'm sorry, the I'll Knit If I Want To um, podcast Ravelry group. And this is just gorgeous. So and I sort of like this color. I'm trying to, I was looking through um, the Quince and Company website and I was looking at this color or they have a really pretty light sky blue. So keep an eye out for that. So that's what I'm going to do next. Okay. Now on to the Maryland Sheep and Wool Hall. So first we have the, every year the festival um, has different artwork. And so this is the second time I've gone. Last year was the first time. So every time I go, I get um, something with the artwork on it. So this is my Maryland Sheep and Wool Festivals, the 44th annual, and this was this year's winning artwork. So I got the obligatory um, souvenir haul, and then also some really cool stuff. So I got the yarn from Boho Chic Fiber Company, which I showed you that I'm knitting the Hey Lady Hey April Fool shawl with. And then the rest of my haul, for this guy, he's too cute. I'm going to show you this first. So this is from the Ram's Horn Connection Whimsical Woolen Art. And she is whimsicalwoolies.etsy.com. And he is so sweet. I have my other sheep buddy up here. And I have my sheep artwork. But I realized I didn't have any black sheep. So I got this little guy who will join the collection and there's other wool buddies on the desk up here in my office and he's just really sweet and he can sort of bend his legs so he moves and stands how you want him to but i just think he's the cutest thing so that was part of my haul i'm gonna have to figure out what to name him if you have an idea for a name go ahead and uh add that in the comments below so and then the rest of my stash is actually spinning related so the first thing I picked up is, are these gorgeous truffle hunt battlings from Hobbledehoy. And I apologize for the crinkle, but I'm going to pull a couple of these out. So this is organic Polworth wool, natural tussa silk, bamboo, and sparkle. It's two ounces. And they're so cute. They remind me of little cupcakes little decorated cupcakes. So I couldn't decide between these or some of her larger bats that she had there, but I decided to go with these because I want to start working on spinning thinner. Like I'd like to be able to spin lace weight singles and then ply them to end up with a fingering yarn. So I thought that would be really good um, to practice with and I wouldn't need much fiber to do that. So I went ahead and um, got those and I think it's really cute. And then no matter what I end up with, I can always knit, you know, something small for myself or my daughter with them and it would be gorgeous. So the next acquisition, and this is getting a little furry just because it's been traveling around in my bag, but this is undyed natural brown BFL four ounces from Gail's art and you probably you most likely know her for her stenciled sock blanks but this four ounce was only ten dollars which is incredibly reasonable so I got two so I have these and my plan for these is to spin um spin them up and have enough to knit a shawl and it's super super soft and squishy. So I thought that was a really a reasonable price and they're so cute. And I just love the natural undyed fiber. I, I sort of go on either end of the spectrum. I like natural and undyed sort of more rustic fibers, or I tend to go all the way to the other end of the spectrum with bright and crazy things, um, and really fun stuff. So that 
I can't just see, decide what I'm going to spend next. I don't know. I will decide. But anyway, so my next fiber spinning acquisition, I have North American Wensleydale locks, about four ounces from Flying Fibers, which is a local yarn and fiber shop here in Landisville, Pennsylvania. And these were grown with love by Susie. And as I was at the register with Jerry, who's one of the owners, um, purchasing these, she informed me that Susie actually passed away this spring. So now I feel really obligated to make something really beautiful with her locks. And these are gorgeous. The color is gorgeous. Um, they're clean, um, super springy. Um, so I have plans for these and my thought is I have a bat from sent to me by Amanda. I'm going to try to do this without making a complete mess. Amanda from Classy Squid Fiber Company in a fiber share package. Um, and this was, this is a one of a kind with rainbow mohair, black and white alpaca, silk, Angelina, and cotton naps that she did at a fiber retreat. And I thought maybe trying my hand at creating somewhat of like an art yarn and using these locks with that might be really fun. Initially, I thought I might use them with the BFL from... Gail's art, but I think I want to try to spin a really smooth and sleek yarn with that BFL for a shawl and then maybe use the locks with the fiber from Classy Squid Fiber Company. So that is my Maryland Sheep and Wool haul. I have my finished object. I have stuff on the needles. I have big plans for spinning, obviously. Uh, my mom and I went down to Maryland Sheep and Wool yesterday. We had a blast. We live about between an hour and a half and two hours away. The weather was not as nice as I would have preferred. It was very muddy, but fortunately I wore my Allbird sneakers, which if you don't know what those are, go now. Google Allbirds, one word. Um, they are wool runners made from merino wool and they are machine washable. You can throw them in on delicate and, and apparently this is the first time I've washed mine, but apparently every time you wash them, they just get softer and better. So it was muddy. Um, hobbly hoy said they actually had standing water under their tent the day before everyone was, um, really good about trying to put down tarps and things so we weren't completely traipsing through the mud but uh my mom and i are now thoroughly convinced that we both need to purchase rain boots for future outings like that so she had she got a really good haul too so she got a sock blank from gail's art she got three skeins of o wool to knit um hohi locatelli's three color cashmere shawl she got a yarn bowl, which she's been wanting for a really long time. What did she get? She got a shawl pin. I think that might have been it. So we had a good time. Money was spent. Food was eaten. Um, and it was a lot of fun. So I'm glad to have been able to film for you guys today. I'm going to try to get on more of a regular schedule, which is going to be easier coming up here because I have the summers off. So I will have more time for all things fiber related. And that's it for today. So thanks for joining me. Um, if you have an idea for a name for my little sheep buddy, put that in the comments below. If you would be interested in doing a cowl for that delineate tank um, from Pom Pom, quarterly, which you can get the pattern on Ravelry as well. If you would be interested in participating in a cow for that, let me know in the comments down below. I'll put links to all of the goodies and companies mentioned in today's podcast in the show notes in the Ravelry group. Uh, make sure you follow me on Instagram at Beautiful Mess Yarn Works. We also have a page on Facebook that you can join. Um, make sure you're in the Ravelry group and let's keep in touch and share what everybody's been working on. So thanks for joining me. And like I said, hopefully I'll be back on more of a regular 
schedule and see you guys in just a couple of weeks. So thank you.